Hello out there, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of a discussion video about drop knives, mass drop as it was once called. And I wanted to just take a few minutes today and just go over my feelings on the company and how they are just completely killing the game and doing some really good things and, and doing some things that if I were the CEO, I was thinking about like the CEO videos that I've done. If I were the CEO, what would I really change? And honestly, the business model that they have in the collaborations and partnerships that they're developing are really, really providing us with some great knives on the marketplace at a great price and yeah i just wanted to talk about uh that in depth a little bit today and use these two knives in front of you as an example of that as like an example of how even the knives that don't appeal to me from them end up sort of winning me over once i see them and get them in hand you know and that's not always the case with knives if there's a knife that you look at a picture of and you don't like the look of it chances are you're not going to buy it and you might never handle it but I've had the opportunity that, you know, I've handled almost every mass drop knife and even the ones like these that, you know, I'm not particularly interested in, they end up finding me and yeah, and I have a chance to check them out. So these two in front of you, they aren't mine, but they do give us a good, um, a good sample size of what drop is actually doing because we have different designers and manufacturers of these two. What we have down below is a ProTech manufactured, uh, Ferrum Forge design called the Mordax, and then up here there is the Gavco designed and We Knives manufactured Thresher, and We does a lot of the manufacturing for um, for Drop. Drop is not a manufacturer; basically, they just distribute. They partner with companies and designers and get everybody together, and they are the selling vehicle that gets the uh, the knives into our hands. And I'm going to talk about some of the pros and cons of that uh, process. Uh, later on and I am going to start though with a little bit of details about each of these knives because I'd be remiss if I didn't go uh, a little bit into what these knives are all about and my feelings about them and especially since it pertains to the bigger picture uh, I think it makes sense to start with that and so let's just talk about the uh, Protec slash Ferrum Forge Mordax first. So this is one that is on loan to me from my buddy Randy really excited that he sent this one my way because when I first checked this one out Online, I saw the name Protec and assumed automatic. I was incorrect. It is not an automatic, but I just didn't think I would like it, you know, and then took a little bit of a closer look and, you know, the blade shape really isn't what I look for. Um, the blade, it's attractive, almost sort of traditional, nothing too fancy about the blade. But what I don't really care for in the knives that I carry is just this degree of a slope coming from the tip all the way down to, you know, the base of the cutting edge. I like something a little more shallow. You know, I'm, I'm usually able to cut with it better. I'm able to resharpen it a little bit better. I'm thinking about knives from like Lion Steel that just I thought would be great EDCs. And for me, they just didn't work. And so I generally stay away from blades like this. And even once I found out at Blade Show that this was a, um, a manual, I thought, eh, well, you know, still might not end up getting it. But <laughs> as soon as I got this knife in hand from my buddy Randy... And if you want to follow this knife around, I know it came from Zach stuff to me, and it's going to be going to Big Red EDC next. So if you're subscribed to him, you'll be able to probably see a, a review on it as well. Um, but when I got this knife in hand, guys, what blew me away about it is just the depth of these scales, the color, just the vibrancy of, of that blue. And it's going to look good on camera. I know that, but it is not going to be done justice. Like, that's just a fact. This is the best color blue I have ever seen on a knife. Hands down. How many blue knives are out there? I mean, I've probably had, I've probably had 50. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of blue knives out there, but this is the, I don't know. It, it just pops. It's a nice, nice shade of blue that you only really get on aluminum, I think. And I think maybe the Kershaw Launch Series has come close to this shade, but I mean, this is just something different. And it, it stands alone just for that reason. The look of a knife really, really can decide whether you like it or you don't. And this knife won me over, despite not having the blade that I really love, uh, just with the handle scale. There are different variations, so um, there's that, but so there's that aspect of it that, man, I got this in hand and all of a sudden I was doubting my initial, you know, idea of it. And then 
I opened the thing. <laughs> oh gosh. And I think it was my last video. I don't know when this is getting posted versus the previous video, but um, very recently I talked about button locks and how they always have play when I was, you know, just comparing it to a smock. And people were commenting that, you know, Hoag's don't have play, this doesn't have play, and that might very well be the case, but this knife locks up like an absolute vault with zero movement, and the action, the closing action on this is absolutely ridiculous. So you can see that that just drops shut. What you can't really tell from the way that I'm holding it is that it's not even up and down. Like, I'm holding this, it's dropping shut at, like, not even a 45 degree angle. With perfect lockup. I mean, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, one of the smoothest knives I have ever come across in my life. And the fact that it's a button lock, I mean, the, the fidget factor aspect, uh, I want to own this knife just for this reason. Very few things I've ever come across are as satisfying as the closing action of this knife. Is it the best opening? Uh, decent. It flicks really nicely. It doesn't really shake out. I mean, if you shake as hard as you can, you could probably shake it out. But it's stuff like that, guys. And, and, and this is sort of the theme of the video. I know it, it's taken a while to get there, but drop... And the partnerships that they've developed are able to take a knife like this that on paper doesn't appeal to me and just the level at which they execute it and the value that they bring to the table makes it something that I want. That's cool. There aren't very many people out there doing that. This one isn't available right now. I think the price point is going to be one of their higher price point knives, like closer to $200. It is 20 CV steel. Um, again, Number of different variations. I think the non-sculpted aluminum frame will be like a cheaper one. Don't quote me on any of this quite yet because, again, this one is sort of still in production. But getting into the Thresher, <laughs> the Thresher is one that I just had zero interest in. And I know the Gavco knives are extremely popular. Uh, the customs are like hard to get and, and go for a very, very premium uh, dollar amount. Uh, this knife, though, just looking at it, zero interest. I don't like the color. I don't like the, the lines. I don't like the blade. There's so much about this knife that I just do not like. I do need to thank my buddy though, DocP91B. Great YouTuber, great guy in the community, just a, a really, really creative guy and a good friend. Uh, he sent this and a couple other knives my way to check out. And this one, I mean, it, it really just doesn't do anything for me. There are so many things like the, the blade shape it is not for me. The, the acute tip, almost like Bowie-ish, is not for me. The, the color and the contouring on the frame is not for me. I really don't like that they chose like the same kind of color <laughs> for the clip and the backspacer and the screws as they did for the scales. There's no contrast. It just doesn't make any sense to me. There are, again, different variations, but this one, it, yeah, no, no. But then you get it in hand, and you're like, huh, wow, this is really comfortable, and it locks up really nicely. And you want to know what? Like, that clip actually does have a nice little, like, shine and catches the light and, and looks pretty neat, and it carries well. And it has a good heft to it, like a really good heft for uh, a user that you'd want to have. And you want to know what? Wow, it's on bearings, but it's got thumb studs, not a flipper. That's pretty cool. You know, so there's all these aspects about it and a construction quality, material quality, value. Um, this is another one of their more expensive, I think 180 bucks on this one. But if we're looking at some of their other models, you know, the ones that I've had, even the designs that I don't like, you look at them versus, you know, the competitive stuff in the marketplace. And I guess here's probably the time in the video where I'll start like sliding in some pictures of the other models that I've either checked out or have seen or handled. You know, you're just looking at some of the, the things that they're doing, and man, they are delivering Wii caliber manufacturing on a knife like this at a price that, that Wii doesn't really offer. If this had the Wii knife stamp on it, there is no way that this wouldn't be a $250 knife. I'm just throwing that out there. That's what I believe.
but it's made by Wii. It's uh, the same. Like, how would the knife be any different if it was <laughs> if it was actually if it actually had the Wii logo? I don't know, but I really believe that this quality knife from them would cost two hundred and fifty dollars. Somehow, Drop is getting it to us for uh, a more significant uh, discount than you would expect. Pretty perfect centering too, because again, it's a Wii. You know, and um, Protec manufacturing here. And guys, like, I, I know some of the stuff that Drop has done. It's not all home runs, you know, but this one is super nice manufacturing. If you look back at some of their other stuff, like the dog tooth, I'm a big Brad Zinker fan. I'll, I'll throw in a picture of this. I did a review of that knife. It's awesome to see a Brad Zinker design uh, get a, a nice treatment, a nice production <laughs> quality knife, because I'm not a fan of, like, what Boker has done with his designs. And so, yeah, the Dogtooth is a great example. You can get that for 120 bucks in the G10 version. S35 VN Steel. Come on. It's great. You know? And I think we just came out with a, another... And this is a perfect example, actually. We just came out with a Brad Zinker design, and that one is like a $250 knife. But you can get a great Brad Zinker for $120. And I think that's really the crux of this video, is just the amount of value versus the production quality that Drop is presenting just based on their partnerships because of the people that they're working with. It's like almost nothing else that I see in the market right now. So many people in the conversations that I've had, um, so many people have told me about companies like Tangram and Civivi that they're going to push the CRKTs and the Kershaws out of the business, out of the marketplace. They're not going to be able to survive anymore because of what Civivi and Tangram are doing. And I've been very slow to jump on that bandwagon. I've been very slow to buy into that because I always feel like CRKT or Kershaw, just even in a quick flash, could could turn some things and and change the way that they do business and adapt and continue to develop. Um, what I think more about is the $150 price point. And I think about companies like Drop being able to steal some of that market. Because if you have $120 for a knife, I mean, where are you going to find some nicer stuff than what they present? Titanium frame locks, we, <laughs> we manufactured, Ferrum Forge designed, I mean, all of the partnerships that they have, where are you going to find that? You know, if you take knives like this and put the Benchmade logo or the Spyderco logo on them, are you getting them below 200 bucks? I don't think there's a prayer that you do. And I'm still going to buy Benchmades and I'm still going to buy Spydercos. Like, this is not a knock on what they do. This is just a, uh, you know, it's not an indictment on them. It's an endorsement of what you're able to get for your money. And such a good selection now, too. I mean, these guys are really killing it. Where they don't kill it, and I mean, we have to talk about the cons because this isn't an advertisement for Drop. I mean, the experience that I've had with them with shipping is crappy it takes a long time sometimes <laughs> and you know a lot of times if you're in on those drops you have to wait a long time while it's still in development and and a lot of people that like you know that really rubs people the wrong way because you are hoping and waiting for this knife and uh, by the time it gets to you there's no way that it meets your expectations because you've built it up for so long and so there are drawbacks and they aren't perfect you know, and, and guys, I don't I don't know really any of the people from Drop or Mass Drop. This this is just me like riffing on things that I see in the community and, and things that, that I'd like to see other companies be influenced by. You know, we'd all like to see the Kershaws and the CRKTs be influenced by what Civivi and you know, again, those other uh, budget companies are doing. And it has and it, and and they have gotten better and they're using better steels and this and that, I think to some extent. But what really could change the market is what Drop is doing, hopefully on a level that starts to grow and pick up more steam and reach more people. Because then I think if we as a community are able to expect this caliber of craftsmanship at the price that they're offering it, if we can get that across the board uh, and that can influence the, the decision making and marketing from other companies... I mean, that would be a huge win just for the community as a whole, you know, and just uh, just raise our expectations and the standards across the board. 
So that's what I think Drop is doing. I don't know if this was a rambly video. I don't know if anyone's going to get anything out of this, but um, but I just wanted to share my thoughts. And again, thank you so much to the to the friends in the community, Randy and Doc P, who sent me these. It was a pleasure to uh, to check them out and uh, and develop this video based on my feelings of these knives. So any questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, guys, let me know down below. I really appreciate you watching. Take care, and I will talk with you soon. Have a good one.